Good morning, folks. Let's wake that mind up. We've got a space weather forecast, deadly earthquakes, and some news articles that hit home to the community, all while the earth-facing quiet continues on our star. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and watch 48 hours and 193 angstroms. Few comments yesterday mentioned the similar shapes to the active region and the coronal hole, and I have to admit they look like a couple kissing beans there crossing the disk. There was no solar flaring once again, and in fact the GOES-15 got bored and decided to take a nap. Probably safe for him to do that for a while here, actually. We're watching a stealth CME that snapped off the departing southern quadrant last night. Tiny and insignificant, but the only eruptive behavior to speak of. Let's watch the first portion of the second departure of this large sunspot group. Certainly not the monster we saw depart four weeks ago. Highly doubtful he'll be back around for a third pass. And let's also come to the Gong H Alpha and note the active region with the lone sunspot umbra and also the lack of large plasma filaments, just a couple small ones scattered about and therefore we virtually have no eruption threats on our star today. Solar wind continues calming as well. Speed, density, and plasma temperature of the electric field are all settled into normal range and the KP index is low. No geomagnetic storm conditions but we can forecast them to come at the end of the week due to the arrival of the stream from this coronal hole. Its IMF and kinetic alpha waves appear stronger than the previous two streams, and one of the best ways to tell is the lithospheric response. Two big quakes settled next to each other like the sunspot group and coronal hole we just saw earlier. First one is by far the bigger story as it was larger, shallower, and in a more populated area. Last two forecasted coronal holes failed to produce, and the lithospheric response was muted. Let's see if we actually get storms this weekend, now that the lithosphere has responded. I expect so. A refocusing paper has come out from the cloud experiment. While the world of cosmic ray cloud forcing involves a 2% change over the 11-year solar cycle, ionization of the atmosphere and increased cloud condensation nuclei are the primary ways we think it happens. Well, now we can cut back the potential effects of the aerosol cloud nucleation as being a smaller portion of that 2% change in the lower clouds. One caution before we put all focus on atmospheric ionization rather than the aerosol pathway, they did not take into account cosmic rays from the sun, which are the primary source. Aerosol forcing is only about 60% of cloud forcing, and that's at the lower levels, and indeed the study did not look at higher clouds. Nevertheless, fairly convincing that the ionization effect should take the stage ahead of the cloud nucleation of aerosols. Now reset your mind because here's another one, the open flux problem on our star. It turns out that either coronal holes are larger than the dark features we see on satellite, there are open flux to the planets outside of the coronal holes, which is actually not open flux, it is just closed further out, or the coronal hole flux is actually much stronger than they thought. Either way, the main point is that the solar flux from interplanetary magnetic fields is delivering far more energy than their working models will allow. After their kinetic alpha waves realization, I would guess they are less than two years from realizing that coronal holes can affect seismicity, even though it's already published in a peer-reviewed paper, but never mind, we're moving on. July climate report is out, and while some experts are already questioning the colors, especially in the southeast, a diligent observer will notice that yet again, the heat was more focused on the daily minimum temperature while the blue mostly found in the maximums chart. That is like every single month. And while the mean is getting slightly higher, if the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting higher, technically that is the definition of increased temperature stability fascinating. We very much appreciate your support. Website members, if you've slacked on Deeper Look episodes this month, we've got four already, so check them out. We've got the wind maps and shots of our star to close here. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.